Less than 12 hours remain until Starship lifts off for the second time in 2025 and the eighth time in the entire Starship program. This will be a pivotal flight determining whether SpaceX's larger Starship 52 can operate as intended. The previous flight of Starship 52 ended in failure, making this attempt even more crucial. So, what will SpaceX do in Starship Flight 8 to ensure success? Let's find out on today's episode. Recently, the Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, the agency responsible for licensing commercial rocket launches, granted SpaceX authorization to conduct the eighth test flight of the Starship system, even as the investigation into the January incident remains ongoing. The FAA issued a license modification authorizing the SpaceX Starship Flight 8 launch. The agency stated that the FAA determined SpaceX met all safety, environmental, and other licensing requirements for the suborbital test flight. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk has started promoting Flight 8 on social media. Initially, the company aimed to launch the test flight on Friday, but later rescheduled it for Monday. The launch is expected to take place that afternoon from the company's facilities in South Texas. Many might think this is an unexpectedly early launch schedule for Flight 8, but in reality, SpaceX had to complete a tremendous amount of work within a month to ensure this timeline. Starship and Super Heavy's seventh test flight aimed high with ambitious goals, demonstrating the core ability to return and catch a booster while launching an upgraded upper stage design. However, overcoming challenges is never easy. Starship Flight 7 did not go as planned, with the second stage exploding, prompting an FAA investigation into the incident. Although many objectives remain unmet, the lessons learned will be directly applied to future vehicles, enhancing their capabilities as Starship moves toward full and rapid reusability. In a statement released on February 24th, SpaceX provided new details about the 7th Starship Super Heavy test flight on January 16th, which ended with the Starship upper stage breaking apart over the Caribbean. According to SpaceX, there was a flash in the A-section or attic of Starship near one of its six Raptor engines about two minutes after the vehicle separated from the Super Heavy booster. That was followed by a pressure rise in the section, suggesting there was a propellant leak. A second flash followed about two minutes later, after which there were sustained fires in the attic. These eventually caused all but one of Starship's engines to execute controlled shutdown sequences and ultimately led to a loss of communication with the ship. The company stated that the last telemetry was received about eight minutes and 20 seconds after liftoff. SpaceX noted that telemetry was lost before the autonomous flight termination system on the vehicle was triggered. That system instead activated about three minutes after the loss of communication with the vehicle. The company concluded that the most probable cause for the loss of Starship was a harmonic response several times stronger and longer in flight than had been seen during testing, which led to increased stress on hardware in the propulsion system. That increased stress caused propellant leaks that could not be fully vented from the attic and allowed the fires that led to the engine shutdowns. Of course, with a clear analysis of the causes behind the incident, SpaceX has implemented solutions to ensure the highest possible level of safety and success for the upcoming Starship Flight 8. As part of the investigation, SpaceX performed an extended static fire of the Starship built for the next mission, Flight 8, firing its engines for 60 seconds in a February test. The 60-second firing was used to test multiple engine thrust levels and three separate hardware configurations in the Raptor vacuum engine feed lines to recreate and address the harmonic response scene during Flight 7. The company stated that findings from the static fire informed hardware changes to the fuel feed lines to vacuum engines, adjustments to propellant temperatures, and a new operating thrust target that will be used on the upcoming flight test. SpaceX said it is also adding vents and a gaseous nitrogen purge system to reduce the flammability of the attic section of the current version of Starship. Following the completion of the investigation into the loss of Starship during the seventh test flight, several hardware and operational changes have been made to improve the reliability of the upper stage. The upcoming flight will aim to achieve objectives that were not met in the previous test, 
including the first ever payload deployment from Starship and multiple reentry experiments to return the upper stage to the launch site for recovery. The flight will also include the launch, return, and recovery of the Super Heavy Booster. The expanded upgrades to Starship's upper stage, which debuted in the previous test flight, focus on enhancing reliability and performance across all flight phases. Starship's forward flaps have been upgraded to significantly reduce heat exposure during reentry while simplifying core mechanisms and shielding. A redesigned propulsion system, including a 25% increase in propellant volume compared to previous generations, enhances the vehicle's performance and ability to execute longer duration missions. Additionally, the vehicle's avionic system has been completely redesigned adding more capability and redundancy for increasingly complex missions such as fuel transfer and vehicle return to the launch site. During the test flight, Starship will deploy four Starlink simulators sized similarly to next-generation Starlink satellites as an initial test for satellite deployment missions. These Starlink simulators will remain in the same suborbital trajectory as Starship and are expected to deorbit naturally. A single Raptor engine is also planned to be reignited in space. The test flight includes several experiments aimed at enabling Starship's upper stage to return to the launch site. A large number of heat shield tiles have been removed from Starship to test stress points in vulnerable areas across the vehicle. Multiple metal tile options, including one with active cooling functionality, will be tested as alternative materials for Starship's thermal protection system during re-entry. On both sides of the vehicle, non-structural versions of Starship's catching interfaces have been installed to assess their thermal performance, along with a section of heat shield tiles that have been smoothed and beveled to address hotspots observed during Starship 6 test flight re-entry. Starship's re-entry profile is designed to push the structural limits of the upper stage's aft flaps at peak dynamic pressure intentionally. Finally, several radar sensors will once again be tested on the launch tower chopstick arms, aiming to improve the precision of distance measurements between the arms and the returning vehicle. The Super Heavy Booster for this flight features upgraded avionics, including more powerful flight computers, improved power distribution and networking, and integrated smart batteries. Separate vehicle and launch pad criteria must be met before Super Heavy can return for a catch attempt, requiring healthy systems on both the booster and the tower, as well as a final manual go-ahead from the mission's flight director. If this command is not issued before the boost back burn is completed or if automated health checks indicate unacceptable conditions with Super Heavy or the tower, the booster will default to a controlled splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. Safety remains the highest priority, and the booster will only return if conditions are optimal. A returning booster will decelerate from supersonic speeds, producing a sonic boom that may be audible in the surrounding area. In general, the only impact on those nearby will be a brief noise similar to thunder, with variables such as weather and distance from the return site influencing the intensity experienced by observers. If Starship Flight 8 achieves a successful launch and manages to softly splash down in the Indian Ocean as planned, it would mark another significant milestone for SpaceX's ambitious Starship program. This success could pave the way for an even more daring attempt on Starship Flight 9, catching the rocket with the launch tower, a feat that would push the boundaries of reusable rocket technology. The idea of a towering catch isn't entirely speculative. It's hinted at in an FCC filing that outlines two potential outcomes for both the first stage booster and the second stage ship on Flight 9, either a controlled splashdown or a catch by the launch tower, affectionately dubbed Mechazilla by SpaceX enthusiasts. The concept of catching the rocket with the tower is a critical piece of SpaceX's long-term vision. Unlike traditional rocket landings, where the vehicle touches down on a pad or a drone ship, the tower catch involves the massive launch structure using its articulated arms to snag the returning rocket in midair as it descends. This method, if perfected, could dramatically streamline recovery and refurbishment processes for the Super Heavy Booster. This is Already a somewhat familiar goal, SpaceX has been inching toward it with previous tests, but extending it to the Starship upper stage would be a bold leap forward. A successful catch would eliminate the need for landing legs, reduce weight and complexity, 
and allow for rapid turnaround times between launches. The FCC filing doesn't guarantee a tower catch attempt on Flight 9, but it keeps the option open, suggesting SpaceX is confident enough in its progress to consider it a viable contingency. The fact that both stages are listed with this dual possibility reflects the company's iterative approach, test, learn, and adapt. Flight 8's outcome will likely play a big role in that decision. A soft splashdown in the Indian Ocean would validate Starship's re-entry and landing capabilities, providing crucial data on heat shield performance, control systems, and structural integrity, key factors that would influence whether SpaceX feels ready to risk a rocket by aiming it at the tower. Why does the tower catch matter so much? It's more than just a flashy engineering stunt. SpaceX sees it as a stepping stone to building a fully reusable system capable of supporting missions far beyond Earth orbit. For Starship to refuel other rockets in space, a cornerstone of plans like creating a propellant depot or sending crewed missions to Mars, it needs to be lightweight, reliable, and recoverable with minimal fuss. Catching the ship with the tower proves it can return precisely and be snatched up without heavy landing gear, preserving payload capacity for fuel or cargo. A propellant depot, where one starship transfers fuel to another in orbit, hinges on this kind of efficiency and confidence in the system. Of course, it's still early days, and SpaceX hasn't publicly committed to a tower catch for Flight 9. The FCC filing is the strongest clue so far, but the company's playbook often involves adjusting plans based on real-world results. If Flight 8 nails the splashdown, the data could embolden SpaceX to go for the catch. If something goes awry, say, an issue with re-entry or landing precision, they might opt for another splashdown to refine the system further. Either way, each flight builds on the last, edging Starship closer to becoming the workhorse of space exploration that Elon Musk envisions. In short, a successful Flight 8 could set the stage for a historic Flight 9, where the sight of Mechazilla's arms grabbing a rocket from the sky might just become reality. It's a high-stakes test that could solidify SpaceX's lead in the race to make spaceflight routine, and it all hinges on that gentle splash in the Indian Ocean. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time.